good day good day lovely people how are you doing this fine evening well my name is ray ann thank you for subscribing to my channel all things ray ann on this channel good things happen here good things happen here so subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and if you have hey how are you doing or hey y'all hey so as you can see by the title, I'm going to be talking about my hysterectomy update. This is now going on, it would be three years. So right now it's a two and a half year hysterectomy update. Um, there's no reason why I haven't did it one year or six months. I just didn't do it. But it was just laid in my spirit to do it now. So this coming June 2022, I would be, it would be three years since I had my hysterectomy. Um, some years ago, I'm just going to dive right on into it. I'm not going to try to fancy anything up because, you know, it's about, it's, it's, it's health, you know. Um, and it's life. You know, we all go through it or sometimes we don't go through it. So it, it all depends. But um, back in um, 2018, well, probably earlier than 2018, probably 2017, felt like this little knot in my um in my stomach, and I did not know um what it was. And of course, because I didn't know what it was, I just never minded. So um because I never minded and I didn't go get it checked out, um, it grew. And um the reason why I've gotten a hysterectomy is because I had fibroids. Um, I didn't only have one fibroid when my doctor took the fibroids out it was um like probably 10 I want to say it was 10 to be safe 10 too many um I call them creatures 10 creatures living inside of me just feeding and feasting off of um my blood supply so um I had stayed on my cycle longer than anticipated and um I was wondering why was I still on I was on for um two two weeks longer than what I was supposed to be on because I only stayed on for uh seven days but I was on this particular time I was on for two weeks but I'm gonna tell you when I went and got myself checked out they did a sonogram and they did some x-rays if you will and they told me that I had some they call them polyps because they didn't really know what it was um they didn't know what it was, but fibroids is common, so they should have known what it was. But they told me that I had some polyps in my stomach, and um, I guess um, it was subside or whatever. But um, I went home. They sent me home. They told me, don't worry about it. Um, it would dry up after some weeks. And I was like, okay, because she really wasn't going to check me out. I was like, I need to get fully examined. She was just asking me questions and then going to send me about my way. But if you don't care about your health um, as much as somebody else do, then they're going to tell you exactly what they want you to know. But you should know your own body. And I'm not going to sit here and we just going to converse with each other because if that was the case, we could have done that over the phone. I came here because there's a serious issue. I'm bleeding. This is going on two weeks now. And I normally stay on for seven days. So this is two weeks after my seventh day that I supposed to have been off my cycle. So when she told me that, I was like, you know, she checked me out. She said, are we going to send you downstairs because I'm feeling some knots in your stomach? So I'm like, okay, now you talking my type of, you know, lingo, if you will, because now I know that it is something wrong. So I went down there to get a sonogram and they saw some, um, um, they call them polyps or whatever. So I was like, okay. She said, don't worry about it. It will go away. That was in 2018. So I said, okay, it went away. I will come on my cycle and then I will go back off in seven days. So I'm like, okay, so I'm good now. It stopped after a, a, some weeks. It, it stopped. But um, when I will come on my cycle the next month, I will go back off, like I said, in seven days. So I really wasn't concerned about it. Fast forward to now to 2019, okay? This was back in um, probably the early part of 2019. I came on my cycle and I stayed on. I, when I say I stayed on, I stayed on. Now, I don't have a lot of um, 
horror stories that I have heard some other ladies had um, suffered with like months and you know I stayed on probably two weeks longer than what I have previously um, in 2018 but this time I was flowing so heavy I had to use um, extra extra padding like depends and I'm like now whoa what what is going on now I'm using depends this something is wrong so I was talking to this other lady and she was telling me that she suffered with the same problem I'm like okay she said every time she come on her cycle she had to wear extra um sanitary um pads if you will and she would have to put on the depend. No, I didn't want that to be my story. I said, I got to get this fixed. I'm going to tell you something. God works in mysterious ways. Um, I switched doctors because I no longer went to that other doctor. I switched doctors and she, um, the doctor was super uh, amazing. And when I went to this particular um, uh, women's clinic or women's, the um, women's clinic, and they asked me, um, what doctor would you like to have? Would you like this one or would you like this one? So I said, well, I really don't know. They said, well, you need to go with this particular one. Her name was Dr. Sewell. Oh, my gosh. She was a godsend. When I tell you she was a godsend, she was. God will put people in your favor, even when you're not even praying. Because I didn't even pray for a good doctor. I was just praying that this bleeding would stop. I got Dr. Sore. She asked me my problem was. She did all the sonograms and everything and the x-rays. She told me I had fibroids. And she told me every time I would come on my cycle, the fibroid would um, make uh, my bleed, my, 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 my bleeding um, longer and, uh, and heavier. So I asked her um, how long have she been in the business. We was just casually talking. Um, and she told me she'd been um, doing it for a while. She said, what she specialized in is fibroids. She said she was a, um, oh, I'm not an OB, she was a labor and delivery doctor. She said, but she didn't want to do that anymore. She wanted to just go full throttle into um, dealing with the fibroids. So she was from Johns Hopkins. Cause I'm from Baltimore and she did my surgery. I had to get all my blood levels together and, um, uh, because I was anemic and, um, I was feeling dizzy. This is how it really actually happened. I was feeling dizzy, not knowing why went to the doctor. I'm thinking it's the flu. I say it's the flu. I know what it is. It's the flu bug. I'm not feeling good. This was back in March. And when I went to the doctors, they took my blood level and they admitted me immediately. I had to get blood transfusions and everything because my iron was low. I was a heavy, heavy, heavy ice eater. So I knew something was going on, but I just didn't know to the, to what extent. So um, I went and got that taken care of. I had to get a blood infusion and I had to get an iron infusion. So, you know, I was all the way dry. <laughs> so, um... After that, I went to see Dr. Sewell. She became my doctor, and she was only my doctor for a short amount of time. That's how I knew that she was a godsend after the fact. So fast forwarding, my blood level was good. I went and got the surgery done, and um, I got a not a total hysterectomy. Uh, hysterectomy. I got a um a partial hysterectomy because I still have my um ovaries. So I just don't have a uterus. So um, after I got everything um, done and over with, she was gone. I called back to speak to Dr. Sewell and they said, Dr. Sewell no longer work here anymore. I said, wow, she was a god sin. She came here because when she came, when I went to... Uh, when she became my doctor, she was only there for a couple of months. Just for a couple of months. And then after she did my surgery, she went on vacation and she never came back. Look at God. Just, just look at God. So fast forward and um, after I got my surgery done, I had stayed. I was supposed to be in the hospital just for overnight. But when I came from, um, when I came from under the anesthesia, um, my stomach was hurting, of course. I felt like I had to throw up and I was coughing. They didn't want you doing a lot of 
um, turning and twisting, of course, because I had the stitches. So I had the bikini cut. Um, I had an old fashioned way. She cut me straight across the bikini line. I wish she would have did a little nip tuck down there, but she didn't. I wish she would have, but she didn't. And um, when I was coughing or not coughing, but feeling like I had to throw up, my stitches had popped. So I started bleeding everywhere. So I had to stay in the hospital for two extra days. That was the first problem. Um, then um, after they got that under control, they put this five pound um, weight on my stomach just to hold it down um, so I could stop bleeding. So I stopped bleeding from my stomach, from my incision. Um, I went home. <laughs> I went home and my son and my husband was helping me out around the house and couldn't go up and down the steps. I didn't know how much a stomach muscle plays a very big part of your entire body. From you lifting up, from you um, stretching in the morning, from you everything. I did not know that that stomach muscle was very was so important. So after all of that, um, I had to have a bowel movement. That was the worst feeling ever because of course you're you're pushing and your stomach muscles they are contracting and with that being said it hurt my stomach because I couldn't really push it out like how you would normally push it out so that hurt but that wasn't an issue um then my stomach where I had felt like I had to vomit in the hospital and my stomach was bleeding so now underneath um, of my incision, my stomach started turning blue and, and purple. So I had a, hem a hematoma underneath. And she told me it was only because of the blood. When the blood seeped out, it seeped in first and then it seeped out. So that cleared up. That was the second problem that I could call it. So besides with me um, throwing, tr trying to throw up and bust my stitches, to me bleeding from the inside because of I bust my stitches, the hematoma. And um, the second thing that I had went through um, with having a hysterectomy was um, like a year later, um, I started spotting and I didn't know what that was about. And I said, what is going on? So I went to the doctors and he told me it was just the lining inside. Other than that, cool sailing, cool breeze. You don't have to worry about um, some of the myths that they was telling you that you would be dry and you would be open like a tunnel. No, none of that happened with me down there. Thank God, because I didn't have the total hysterectomy. I just had a partial hysterectomy. So of course my ovaries were still there, which um, my body was still being able to um, function down there the way it's supposed to and lubricate itself the way that it's supposed to. So yeah, with that being said, my two year or two and a half year, going on three years, hysterectomy update has been a success. i never forget my girlfriend telling me um, it was the best thing that she had ever done. And I can truly say that was by far one of the best decisions I have ever made because she had asked me if I wanted a hysterectomy and I told her no because of everything that people was telling me don't get it you won't be lubricated down there um it itching and scratching all that stuff that you know they were hearing by um other people that never had it but if you talk to someone that have had a hysterectomy, they can tell you the ins and outs of what they went through. Now, everybody's body is not the same. Am I recommending that you go out there and get a hysterectomy? No. Especially if you're still trying to have kids. No. But my tooth was already tied, so I knew I wasn't having any more kids. But my um, only concern with it was the fibroid. So I had to get it so I could um, stop that continuous bleeding. And um, yeah, they removed like 10, the size of grapefruits. Um, my stomach was so, my stomach was big um, and I didn't know why it was big. But after they removed the fibroids, my stomach did go down um, some, <laughs> some. <laughs> um, I'm still working on that now because my stomach was already kind of flabby anyway, but I'm still working on that now. But I'm telling you, ladies, that was the best thing I have ever, ever, ever done. Um, 
um, I don't have to worry about any more um, any pain or nothing. Like I am, I'm really, really good. I'm really good. No complications. Thank you, God. I, I'm telling you that lady was a godsend. So the purpose of my hysterectomy was because I had fibroids and they were growing and they was feeding off my blood supply every time I would come on my cycle. They will cause my bleeding to be heavy than um, normal. So yes, that's my two and a half year update of my hysterectomy. Um, if you have any medical conditions um, going on that is causing you to be on your cycle longer than what you normally would be on, I would advise you to see your doctor and consult with your doctor, you know, and pray that God will send you a good doctor that can give you good direction and good guidance with your body because nobody is going to um, take care of your body the way you take care of your body. Um, the doctor's supposed to be in your best interest, but sometimes, hey, you just don't get them to be in your best interest. But I thank God that the doctor that I had, that she had my best interest at heart. She did not force me to get a hysterectomy. She asked me if I would like one, and she told me to think about it. And if I didn't, she told me, okay, we would just remove it. But the one thing that she did say that stuck with me, she said, because you're young, if we remove all of these fibroids, in five years, they will come back. So I had to think about that because I didn't want to go through that anymore. And they grow. Like, I felt the smallest one in 2017, and the biggest one was in 2019. So it didn't take long for that fiber to um, mature or to grow because it's feeding off of your um, your blood supply. So ladies, just take good care of yourself. Um, be in tune with your body. Do your checks, you know, with your hand. If something ain't right, go and see your doctor before it's too late. And it was too late. It was too late for me when I had got all of this done. When I had first felt that not in my stomach. I should have jumped on it then. But I wait until the whole family got in there and start trying to take over my body. And <laughs> yeah, but thank God that everything is fine and no complications beside my stitches popped and the hematoma and the little spotting. But that was it. Other than that, my recovery was a blessing and I thank and praise God just for that. So again, thank you for tuning in to my um YouTube, talk about my hysterectomy update. And yeah, take care of yourself because nobody is going to love you the way that you do. Bye-bye.